Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Game Performance Review. 14 games tested on the Acer Predator Helios 300 gaming laptop computer. Live gameplay. This is a beast of a machine. For $1,000, you get an i7-7700HQ, 4 cores, 8 threads, 3.8 gigahertz max clock speed, 16 gigs of RAM, a full GTX 1066 gig card, 256 gigabyte solid state drive, and a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS display. Linked down in the video description below will be my original hardware review showing the computer in detail, front, back, sides, talking about the hardware and why this is such a good machine. You will also find linked down in the video description below the link to Amazon.com where I bought this machine and so should you if you want the best deal in a $1,000 gaming laptop available at the beginning of 2018. This thing is a beast. If you are only interested in the benchmark chart, you'll find it at the 15 minute mark. Each game gets one minute of recording. The Witcher 3 gets two to allow me to record the intro. But at this point, we are into the second minute of The Witcher 3. At the two minute mark, it'll change to the next game at the three minute mark and so on and so forth. All of these videos were published previously in their entirety over on Tech Deals Gaming, but I realize not everybody wants to sift through 14 different 15 minute long game performance videos. They just want the short, sweet version. This is something new that I'm trying that I've never done before. I'm putting all 14 games, one minute of each, into one video with a single benchmark chart showing the average 1% low and 0.1% low numbers. Now, if you take a look at the real-time performance in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see that we are running just fine at about 50 frames per second. We are at ultra detail. Please note, this game really should be run at high. I did test it at high. In fact, the high results are over on Tech Deals Gaming. I'm not including them here to keep this short and sweet. Over there, sometimes I include multiple performance numbers. Here, I'm only doing one. We've already jumped into Players Unknown Battleground. Like I said, it will come fast and furious. We're doing 60 frames per second again in ultra detail. Now at ultra detail, this is not going to maintain an average of 60 frames per second. Spoiler alert, it's a little bit below that, but it's pretty close. You can see here we're just above it. The graphics card remains the primary limitation. This laptop does have a very good graphics card. As I noted in the standalone hardware review, if you want more graphics performance than this, you've got to spend a lot more money. The GTX 1070 laptops generally start around $1,500. Where's this machine's a thousand? So in order to tick up one detail notch or perhaps get an extra 20 frames per second, you're looking at spending 50% more money. It's a lot of money. You can certainly do it, but it's not what I would call a value. You can see now that we're indoors, the frame rate's down in the 40s. It dips to the 30s at times. I would like to note that both The Witcher 3 and Players Unknown Battleground were in fact completely playable. The controllability of the game, the actual playability of the game were spectacular. So even though the frame rate didn't maintain 60 frames per second all of the time, it was really, really controllable. No input lag. Here we are in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, one of my favorite games from 2017. I absolutely love the beauty of this game. We are playing at very high detail here. Difference, it's not at ultra, which is completely crushing. This should also be played at high. In fact, I recommend that you set high detail in most games. There's exceptions, Overwatch, etc. would be fine at ultra. But uh, the games like this should be played at high rather than very high or ultra. But even though we are at very high, even though the frame rate is below 60 frames per second, it is fluid and smooth. Now, keep in mind that you're watching a recording. You're not necessarily seeing the actual gameplay itself. You're not playing it. But Take my word for it, it's very controllable. Pressing the keys, pressing attack, moving around. There was no issues with controlling this whatsoever. Very, very fluid and very smooth thanks to that i7-7700HQ processor. Jumping straight ahead, this is XCOM 2, another one of my favorite games this year. In fact, I've beaten this game three times full playthrough and live streamed a full playthrough, and that upload is over on Tech Deals Gaming. Now, if you look at the MSI Afterburner numbers up there, you might notice they're a bit different. These were recorded a few months ago. Half of these benchmarks were recorded in September. Half of them were recorded at the end of 2017. So that is why it's different, because it's actually a different version of MSI Afterburner. This is one of the old ones. The other one, the one that you just saw before was one of the new ones. 
Now, interestingly enough, we are playing this game at high detail, not ultra, and it does not maintain 60 frames per second all the time. But it's a turn-based game, so it doesn't really matter. You're not doing anything that requires quick reflexes, so the frame rate in this game doesn't really matter. I've played this on even lower-end machines, and while it's not the smoothest thing in the world, it plays just fine. This game is a lot of fun. Go check it out if you are interested in turn-based strategy games. Moving on to Fallout 4. I did not turn off V-Sync for this, please note. You can force it off in the driver. It messes up the physics engine a bit. Instead, I do Fallout 4 a bit different. Look in the upper left-hand corner at the MSI Afterburner. The GPU usage is at 68, 65%. What that means is we have a reserve of performance available. This would probably be in the 80s to 90 frame per second range. Well, there, see, now the frame rate's dropping because we hit 100% GPU usage. So instead of having the frame rate vary, the graphics card usage varies. The physics engine in Fallout really wants to run at 60 frames per second. There's no option to turn off V-Sync in the game, which is why I just leave it at 60 frames per second and instead let the GTX uh, graphics card percentage usage number actually reflect how much of the card is left in reserve, how much you could handle a busier area in, uh, in the game. Now the next game I'm going to show you is Ghost Recon Wildlands, and that game is a beast, and it is way too much fun. It also struggles at 60 frames per second. We are at high detail preset. Again, this is one of the ones I tested back in September rather than more recently, but the results are still going to be very similar. They wouldn't change by much, even with updated graphics drivers, which yes, I do always test with the latest graphics drivers, but you know, you might be looking at 1 or 2 percent difference. It's not going to be huge. This game came out in March, so this driver is already fully optimized for this game. If you like open world games, if you are an OCD person who likes to clear maps, Ghost Recon Wildlands is the game for you. This is so much fun and it is a beautiful game. Notice that we're right around 60 frames per second. Notice that the graphics card is fully utilized. Notice that the CPU is jumping up to 75% usage. There's 85% usage right there. This is an eight thread processor, but it only has four real processing cores. And that's important because if you get like an i5 laptop that has four cores, four threads, games like this will stutter terribly. The actual average frame rate will be close, but the actual uh, the gameplay, moving the character, pressing the keys will be much worse. If you're serious about gaming in 2018, you really don't want anything less than an i7 CPU or Ryzen, which is a separate conversation. But from the Intel side, it's all i7. Sniper Elite 4. These shots are wicked cool. Kind of kind of creepy and grotesque at times, but hey, it's a cartoony kind of grotesque. Watch this shot. This is epic. Oh, I think his grandchildren are going to feel die. He won't have any grandchildren after that shot. Yes, I know. It's brutal and terrible. 60 frames, 90 frames, 60, 70. Performance is not remotely an issue here. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you. That is a double kill. That was not an edit right there. I don't know that I've ever done that, but I might have done it before, but that is exceptional. In fact, you saw double kill come right up on the screen. Ooh, that has got to hurt. This game is flawless. Certainly, it requires a decent frame rate in order to be able to stealth around and aim your sniper scope, but not massively so. The truth of the matter is it's, it's smooth. The inputs are smooth. The responsiveness is very smooth. Now we've jumped ahead to the division. You can see by the MSI Afterburner numbers. Again, this is also a September recording. No issues with performance whatsoever. We are in the first downloadable content, the first expansion, the Underground. Easy to test, easy to benchmark. It's very repeatable. Uh, you can see I'm blowing up some enemies here. I did benchmark the full run. Even Keep in mind that I'm only showing you a minute of each game, but I actually played the entire Underground Battle and benchmarked the entire Underground Battle. So the average 1% and 0.1% lows that you're going to see in just a minute are from the full run. I don't get to beat many games these days. I don't have a lot of time for gaming like I used to before I was young, single, and had no children. But this is one of the few games that I've beaten this year. Ghost Recon Wildlands is another. Uh, XCOM 2 is another. These things are way too much fun. I have, in fact, beaten this game and quite enjoy the underground. It's easy to play for 10 or 15 minutes and have some fun and blow stuff up and feel a sense of satisfaction from all the devastation and destruction. Battlefield 1. This is one of the recent tests you can see. 
We are at ultra detail. Notice that even at ultra detail, we are over 60 frames per second. Take a look at the CPU usage. I mentioned this before in Ghost Recon. I'm going to mention it again. If you're frustrated with a lag, with a stutter, with input delay, when you press a key, if there's a hesitation when your character moves, if you notice the game is choppy, even though the average frame rate seems to be good, and you're playing on an i5, this is why this game wants eight threads. It really, really wants eight threads. Now, we're playing in, of course, multiplayer. Single player, is that's not the case. In single player, an i5 would be just fine, but if you want to play Battlefield 1 multiplayer, absolutely positively you want at least 8 threads. Now moving on, the next game we're going to play is Star Wars Battlefront 2, and I would like to note that I'm showing you both the ground and the space, but the benchmarks are for the ground only. Space plays better than the ground, so there's no point in showing you the benchmarks. The benchmarks for space are over on Tech Deals Gaming, but needless to say, they're better than ground. So the first 30 seconds of this is a ground combat mission. You can see a lot of stuff is going on. Look at the performance up there. We're getting 90 frames per second. Please note, we are at ultra detail here. This is ultra detail, 1080p, CPU usage is fine. The graphics card is, of course, fully utilized, but look at our frame rate. We're over 80 frames per second. There's no issue whatsoever. Now we're in the space combat. Oh, yeah, look at that, 130 frames per second. Now it's not 130. In fact, you can see it drop there when I fast forwarded it to combat. It's not 130 frames per second all the time, but it is really, really quick. Space combat is fast. It is beautiful. And if you're all concerned about having perfect performance, performance, please don't. This machine will crush this game. I recently live streamed the single player experience in this game and beat it. It was a lot of fun. If you have not played this yet, give it a try. If you would all like Star Wars, it is way too much fun. World of Warships. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know I am a huge World of Warships fan. Two points. Number one, this was recorded back in September. And number two, I have edited the engine config file to remove the 75 frame per second limit. Normally, World of Warships will not run faster than 75 FPS because of a config file limit. You can edit that to lift it for benchmarking purposes, which is what I've done here in case you're wondering why you never seem to get these frame rates. Now, this game is primarily CPU driven. Even with the limit lifted on the actual frame rate, take a look at our graphics card usage. We're at 50% right here. The game will not run any faster with a 1070 or 1080 or anything else. We are entirely limited by the CPU. And you might say, wait a minute, how can we be limited by the CPU? We're only at 25%. Correct. This game really only uses about two cores, sometimes three. It's not using all the cores, and since we have a four-core, eight-thread chip, uh, using four cores would be 50%, using two is 25%, and so on. Now, the same thing is true in most of these games. You're not seeing the CPU usage at 100%, and GTA 5 here is a perfect example, because the game itself simply will not use eight threads. If the game's not using eight threads, the CPU usage will not go to 100%. Now, we're at high detail here. This is also a September recording. If I was doing this today, I'd have put it at very high detail, but back in September, I was doing everything at high detail only to keep the benchmarking similar. Look at the graphics card usage. We're only using half the graphics card. This is a very, very very CPU dependent game. Now, yes, again, we're not using all eight threads, but it's the clock speed that counts. The i5 versions of these chips run at a lower clock speed. You would get lower performance. It won't just use more threads. It will just run slower. Of course, we're getting 130 frames per second here, so that completely hardly matters, but it runs very, very well, needless to say. GTA 5 now is a couple of years old and frankly no longer requires top tier hardware, yet it's still quite a beautiful game. Overwatch, playing D.Va, of course, what else? In fact, I'm not even going to put a cut here. This whole initial combat sequence was so chaotic and so active, I'm going to leave this uncut for you. Overwatch is a ton of fun. Notice that our graphics card is fully utilized, our CPU is 50% utilized, and we are at 150 to 160 frames per second. This game runs very, very well. No, you don't need a $1,000 laptop to play this game, but I have benchmarked this on $600 laptops as well, and the performance falls off real fast. So there's a very, very fine line between how much you can give up and still have decent performance. A GTX 1050 laptop will play this just fine, uh, an MX150 or a 940MX, not so much. It'll do it, but it's not great. The 1060, of course, completely crushes it. 
Now we are just over one minute away from the benchmark charts. Now there's gonna be three benchmark charts, average, 1% low, and 0.1% low. I'll explain what those mean in just a minute, but first, League of Legends. Yeah, I included it only because this is one of the most popular online games around the world. I, it's complete and utter overkill to buy a thousand dollar laptop to play League of Legends. Take a look at the frame rate, take a look at the CPU usage, take a look at the graphics card usage. Now, in the games I tested in December, this newer version of MSI Afterburner shows the clock speed. Now, the chip has a max turbo speed of 3.8, but that's one core only. We're using more than one core. But notice that it's maintaining 3.5 to 3.6 gigahertz. This chip has a base speed of 2.8. Don't worry about the base speed. You're never going to get down there unless there's something wrong with your machine or your Maybe it's 100 degrees in your room and you have no air conditioning. So we're at 3.5 gigahertz without a problem. But notice the graphics card. The graphics card clock speed has downclocked itself because it's basically bored. It has nothing to do. This game doesn't require a 1060. It's overkill. This game runs on integrated graphics. But I'm including it to show you how much overkill it really is. Now we're at the benchmark charts. This is the average frame rate of all 14 games with the detail setting shown. Ultra, ultra, very high. That's what the VH stands for is very high. Notice that there are four games on here that are not an average of 60 frames per second, but they're pretty close. And as I said earlier, Witcher 3 and PUBG should both be played at high, not ultra. When you watch my original hardware review of this laptop, I said 1080p, 60 frames per second, high detail, not ultra. But I tested them at ultra because people might want to see how well it runs. Now, of course, Overwatch and League of Legends are perfect. I think that's pretty much to be expected, but they're included just for comparison to show you what happens when you play less demanding games on top of the line, or at least close to top of the line laptops. GTA 5 and World of Warships also play perfectly. I'm genuinely impressed by Star Wars Battlefront 2. Ultra detail, 90 frames per second average. That game is so well optimized. Battlefield 1 is really interesting. 86 frames per second at ultra detail. Going to the 1% low numbers, what the 1% low numbers essentially means is that this is the frame rate it drops to 1% of the time. Or to flip that on its head, 99% of the time you will get better than this frame rate. Now you might see a lot of low numbers on here and go, oh man, what's the problem here? That's why I include the actual live gameplay. Notice PUBG was at 33 frames per second, 1% low. Go find that in there. In fact, go, go watch the long version over on Tech Deals Gaming. It's not there. That game plays very, very well. Even at ultra detail, it'll play much better at high. Same thing with XCOM 2. See the 34? That's just the transitions that are in there. That's not actually the gameplay. It's fine. Um, same with the others. There was one sequence in Fallout 4 where it dipped briefly, but otherwise it was smooth at 60 and so on. 1% lows give you an idea of where it's going to dip down to. It's the playability number. Set these games to high rather than ultra and most of these numbers will come up noticeably. The next chart is the 0.1% low. It takes it a step further. 99.9% .9 of the time, you will get this frame rate or better. Now, some of these numbers may look very, very low. Take a look at Battlefield 1, 42 frames per second. Go back and watch the gameplay. Go watch the full video over on Tech Deals Gaming if you'd like. I'll put a link to that down in the description below if you want to try and find the 42 frame per second. We're talking about a handful of frames in a 10 or 20 minute battle. I personally don't think 0.1% lows are that important. I think the 1% and the average are what's important, but I include the 0.1% lows because A, people want to see them, B, everybody else tests them and puts them in, so I'm putting them in there, and simply because some of you may simply prefer it or disagree with me. But I think that the 1% low is the important number and then the average, of course. The long and short of it is at high detail, this laptop plays every game just fine that I threw at it. Regardless of benchmark charts, the reality is everything here was controllable. I would play all these games on this laptop. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Post your comments below the video and check the video description for links. Links to my hardware review on this laptop, links to Amazon.com where you can buy it, and I did too. Acer did not send this to me. It is a great machine and I highly recommend it two thumbs up. And a link over to Tech Deals Gaming if you'd like to watch each of these benchmarks in their entirety. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.